Welcome back to Casual Bars Rugby. It has been a while. I think it's about two weeks, three weeks, could be, um, since we last posted a video. We try and get back into, into the groove of things. We got some brilliant news today. We got the SA Rugby nominees for the year. We're going to cover three to four topics. We're going to cover the team of the year, the coach of the year, the men's rugby player of the year, and of course the young player of the year. Um, so we're not even going to waste any time. I truly missed you guys. Make it an interactive video. Tell me who you think should win every single award uh, in these categories. Let's get into it. <laughs> Starting off with Team of the Year, we got the nominees of Toyota Cheetahs, the Springboks, and the DHL Stormers. Of course, we know when it comes to rugby heritage that we've spoken about on this channel quite frequent frequently. If the Cheetahs win the Curry Cup, the Box win the World Cup. And that's exactly what we got this year once again. The Cheetahs have won it. Uh, the Springboks, of course, won the, the Rugby World Cup. Absolutely amazing. And then the DHL Storm is back-to-back -back finalists. Of course, lost in the final uh, against Munster. Some people would say we bottled it. Um, and I would agree. Um, that was a heartbreaking night. Um, all three of them fair shouts, but it's, there's a standout performer in here, and that is World Cup winner. You only get it every once in every four years. Uh, the Springboks takes team of the year very easily, especially the emotions that they put us through. Uh, the roller coaster of emotions, you would say. I mean, some people would have maybe panicked after we, we lost that game against Ireland. Of course, you don't ever want to lose a game, so it does knock the confidence a bit. Um, but the, the winning... Of a one-point margin in your quarter-final, your semi-final, and your final. Arguably the hardest run there's ever been in a Rugby World Cup. I'm talking about, let's just name the teams. You played Scotland, who most likely would have been in a semi-final, or at least the quarter-final if they were in any other pool. Um, you had a revolutionized um, Tonga that was ready for war. Definitely had their best performance of the tournament against us. I don't count Romania. Um, then you had Ireland, the world number one. Now, I'm not talking about the, the teams that we all won. I'm just talking about the run itself. Uh, then you had France, the host nations, one, host nation, one of the favorites as well. Uh, England, who, who's always up there when it comes to a Rugby World Cup. They were up for this game. There was this revenge um, revenge narrative going around that this is what they want uh 2019 revenge story and then of course the best team to ever grace this earth um the all blacks in the final brilliant run truly deserved springboks tag team of the year we're moving on to coach of the year and we have john dobson from the dhl stormers you got uh javis furi from the Toyota cheetahs and jock ninabe from the springboks now you could use the same argument with um with Jock Nienhaber as you used uh, with the Springboks as team of the year. But I'm going to switch it up just because we lost a couple of games in the lead up to, to the Rugby World Cup. Um, and I've got to put some respect on, on, on my franchise team that I support. Now, I would have loved to have given it to the Cheetahs because I think they do absolutely amazing stuff. But you got to give it to, to John Dobson, who's taken over from the Stormers, won the yards in his first, um, in his first um, year of... of of the URC and then went in on to, to play in the final of the next year. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. He's absolutely re uh, revolutionized uh, what we see the Stormers as with the brand of rugby. Uh, it's just beautiful to watch. I mean, just look at all the Stormers players peaking for, for the Springboks as well. So, Dobbers gets my coach of the year. Of course, you can disagree. Go into the comments, rant about it, everything. I don't care. Tell me what you think about it. Uh, moving on to the young players of the year. We got Sasha Fein Feinberg, um, Ngumazulu, Jaden Hendrickson, Kainan Moody, Ivan Roos, and Ruan Fenter. Now, I would not have put in uh, Jaden Hendrickson in there. I do think he's a good player, but he was injured for so long in the season. Uh, I believe Grant Williams was a bit better than Jaden Hendrickson, even for the Sharks. Um, Sasha, of course, one of the standout performance uh, performers, uh, Ivan Roos, brilliant, and Ruan Fenter as well. You can't go wrong with any one of those guys. But there's one standout player, and it's the guy that, that played a massive role for South Africa during this whole year, and that's Kanan Moody, whether it was on outside center or on the wing. He's been absolutely bri brilliant. He's been sensational, and he's the future wing for us. 
he could be the future outside center, but we have got we are spoiled for talent when it comes to the outside center position in terms of we still got Luke on your arm, we still got Jesse Grill. Now you got Kanan Moody, and you've got this absolute star boy from, from Alliance, uh Hinku van Vai coming through as well. So I think it's gonna only gonna be it might not even be long before we see uh, Sasha in into the Springbok mix. We'll probably see a lot more of Ivan Roos in the in the Springbok lineups, uh, especially with Dwayne Vermeulen retiring now. Uh, so it's probably going to be either Ivan Roos or um, Jasper Visa. Of course, another name coming through, Cameron Hanekom, uh, a player to watch. But Kanan Moody takes this one very, very easily. Now moving on to the big one. Um, and that is the men's rugby play of the year for South Africa. And... Let me just move this because I'm looking away from you guys and that's very disrespectful. So our five nominations are Peter Stef de Toy, Eben Etzebet, Sia Kulisi, Frans Malerbe and Damien Willemse. And I mean, Peter Stef to tackle is, he's been sensational since his return. I mean, look at the first game that he played against uh, Australia when he returned uh, for the rugby championship. Sensational. And then sensational in his last game of the Rugby World Cup in the final against the All Blacks. Now, he was sensational in those two games. And he was spectacular throughout all the other games. Every single time we played a game, Peter Steff to tackle was never subbed. Always there, making the hard yards, making the tackles. Uh, part of every breakdown. I'm getting called. <coughs> my apologies for that. That was my brother calling me. Absolute nuisance. But anyway, we, we were spoken about Peter Steffs Toy, and he was absolutely brilliant in every single game since his return. Uh, and he was, in my opinion, the player of the tournament in the Rugby World Cup. So, moving on, you got Ivan Etzebet, Elizabeth, uh, as the people say now. Um, of course, nominated for World Rugby Player of the Year as well. Uh, deserves, Ari Savia uh, deserves to, to, win the, to, win, to win it all. Because uh, I thought he was snubbed last year of not even getting a nomination. This year he's been absolutely brilliant, Ari Savia. So, Ibn Etzebet, in my opinion, takes that second place on World Rugby Player of the Year. He has been absolutely brilliant for us. I mean, just think about, if there's one game that just emphasizes what he brings to the team. You just watch that game that we played against France in the quarterfinal. He did everything. He was a monster from start to finish. Just unbelievable. What a servant to the game. What a servant to South Africa. Absolutely insane. Then you have Sia Kulisi. The one player that, in my opinion, I would not have uh, nominated. Not on the fact that he hasn't been playing well. Uh, he was just injured for large parts of the year. So, he was absolutely brilliant for us when he came back. But he was injured for too long, in my opinion. Of course, he's still captain South Africa. Captain rugby. Run for president, Sia. I don't even care. Uh, he'd get my vote. But uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't belong, in my opinion, in these nominations. But that doesn't take anything away from him and what he means to this team. I just think the others have a bit more, a couple more legs to stand on. You know, especially after, see, I didn't have legs because he yeah, was out with a knee injury. Then, the most underrated player in world rugby, Franz Malherbe. This guy is at every breakdown, he's at every ruck. He literally makes you see the inside of your asshole at scrum time. The hardest worker on the field, like just to call him the be best prop in the world, still tells me you underrate this guy. He's been doing it for years and years and years. And it doesn't look like he wants to retire anytime soon. He's literally, it doesn't look like he even has a passion for the game. It's just like, okay, it's my job and I'll just be the best in the world at it. Um, Franz Malherbe, absolutely insane for us. I don't know what we're going to do when we finally lose him. Um, of course, you've got Mchunu coming through. You've got Oxen Chair still on the bench. Um, those are just two examples, but no one can replace what Franz Malherbe brings to this team for us. And then, of course, you've got the star boy, 25-year-old, 26-year-old, 25-year-old, I think it's 25-year-old, Damien Willemse. 25 years of age, and he's won a URC. He's played in another URC final, so two URC finals, of which he's won one. He's run, won a rugby championship, he's won the British and Irish Lions Tour, and he's won... Two Rugby World Cups, and now he's been nominated for Men's Player of the Year as well. I mean, this guy has got the world at his feet. He's absolutely brilliant. The maturity that he's got um, in this team within the space of a year, a year and a half. 
I think it was when we had the injury, injury crisis um, in our num- number 10 jerseys. He took the reins as that number 10. Um, and from there, he's just got that confidence that he maybe had when he was at school level where he just absolutely snaked through everyone. And that is the Damien Willems who we're seeing now. Absolutely world-class, insane. Was he the best 15 in the World Cup as well? Probably. He's definitely up there. So... Overall, my men's rugby player of the year, it has to go to uh, to Eben Etzebed. He was nominated for world player of the year as well. Um, so, but let me know what you guys think. There is one change I would have made. And I want to know what changes you would have made. Because I've seen a couple of people on my TikTok say Cheslin Colby should have been there. But I'm going with, I wanted to see Jesse Creel get a nomination. Just because we all doubted him for so long. And literally, everyone just spoke about the big loss that Lukanya Arm is going to be. And of course, you would be stupid not to say Lukanya Arm was going to be a big loss. But the, the maturity that Jesse Creel showed and the performances that he put in week in, week out, absolutely brilliant. Um, I felt he had to be there because he, he, he stepped up and he, and he covered that spot and really made us, made us think we are not even missing Lukanya Arm, even though we are. You, you you never felt. Listen, we could have, we could have dealt. We could have we could have dealt with the with the Lacanya arm now. We could have he could have done something for us. That's exactly what Jesse Creel brought to this team. Um, absolutely brilliant. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Tell me what your thoughts are on my picks um, and say what your picks are. Let's get this interactive. See you next time. Thank you.